The landing ships rumbled as their gravity dampeners absorbed the impact of planetfall, disgorging a steady stream of tanks, walkers, and infantry onto the alien soil. Captain Jacob observed it all from the command deck of his flagship, the Imperium. Through reinforced glass, he surveyed the primitive world stretching away in all directions. Dense forests of curling fronds, peaked mountains thrusting like rigid spines, wide muddy rivers weaving sluggish paths to unknown seas. From below, the initial contact unfolded. Spinning sensors atop scout walkers pinged the terrain, compiling topographical data. Primitive tents stitched together from leathery hides and dangling threads came into view. Alien blobs lumbered between them on stubby legs, their flabby flesh jiggling with each step. At the vanguard, light tanks rumbled forward in loose formations, plasma lances primed. The lead vehicle shuddered to a halt, sensors detecting movement amid the tents. A blob emerged, tall as a human but twice as wide, pale flesh speckled with vivid pigments. Multiple waving tendrils clutched instruments of unknown purpose. It bleated a quavering challenge, limbs flailing defensively. Moments later, a lance of searing particles speared its center mass. Flesh blackened and ruptured outward in an expanding bubble of vapor. The blob collapsed, tendrils twitching feebly. An answering squeal arose from the tents, and dozens more blobs poured out in uncontrolled panic. More lances spat death, plumes of smoke rising where blobs once stood. Those few spared the initial volley scattered in all directions, fat wobbling blobs swallowed up by the tall fronds. Engines growled as the tanks pursued, crushing stray tendrils and fleshy limbs beneath treads. Within minutes, the settlement was reduced to scorched earth and drifting ashes. Only the acrid stench of seared meat remained. Satisfied, Jacob signaled the advance to continue. Wave after wave of armored vehicles rolled from the landing ships, plasma weaponry blazing cleansing fire across the alien landscape. Primitive burrows collapsed under concentrated strafing, burying inhabitants in cascading soil. Strange orchards bearing bulbous fruits were leveled, their colorfully ripening orbs crushed to pulp. Roving packs of blobs attempted to flee the destruction, clustering together with mewling cries. But gravity disruptors mounted on walkers kicked up whirling dust storms to confuse optic sensors, enveloping the aliens in blinding clouds. When the dust settled, smoking craters and shredded flesh bore grim testament. By nightfall, over a hundred square kilometers had been ravaged clean of signs of sapience. Only jagged stumps of primitive shelters remained, dotted amongst the still smoldering wreckage of trees and toppled soils. Yet still, Jacob scrutinized sensor feeds, detecting flickers of life retreating into the dense wilderness. The land had been seared, but the battle was far from won. As the second dawn rose over the alien world, scout probes swept the still smoldering frontier of the invasion. Jacob monitored their feeds closely, seeking any hint of organized resistance amid the retreating aliens. Most blobs had fled deep into the trackless forests and fern prairies. Only a few aimless stragglers wandered the blasted zones, pausing to investigate scorched artifacts with questing tendrils. Scanner pings revealed simple minds devoid of higher purpose. Deeper probes revealed more substantial findings. Heat signatures bloomed within craggy mountain valleys, indicating swarming masses of life. Jacob directed squadrons of tanks to move out and investigate and observe through their external cameras. The armored vehicles crested rocky ridges under whining anti-gravity guns primed. Below stretched a wide valley tinted cyanic from myriad bioluminescent blobs clustered thick as livid boils. Tall as small buildings, pulsating flesh sacks swayed atop thick limbs, tendrils weaving intricate patterns through the drifting multitude. Strange energy fields shimmered between them. At Jacob's signal, plasma lances spat downwards in searing arcs. Beams sliced through seething masses, vaporizing flesh and viscera in towering geysers of steam. Yet where one fell, two more seemed to take its place from inner reservoirs. Energy fields flickered chaotically, 
warping weapon signatures. Sensors glitched and cameras juddered as unseen forces tossed the tanks like flotsam. Gravity drives faltered. Vehicles plunging from ridges to explode amid the valley or tumble and over end down scree slopes. Lances flared wildly, blowing colleagues to smoking ruin. Panicked soldiers leapt free only to vanish, swallowed by riotous fields. Jacob snarled a curt order. Lumbering artillery mechs stomped into position along the crags, cannon arms primed with fusion warheads. A barrage of missiles shrieked downrange to impact within the valley in bellowing fireballs, obliterating scenery, biologics, and sensors alike under apocalyptic plasma storms. After several minutes of non-stop bombardment, reducing the valley to a molten caldera, the bombardment ceased. Spinning cameras showed only rivulets of vitrified stone crawling with cooling cracks where life once thrived. Not a single anomalous energy signature lingered. Yet unease gripped Jacob as repairs were effected on the scattered tanks. These were no mindless hordes. Some intelligence had orchestrated ambushes and engineered novel biological weapons on a vast scale, adapting faster than anticipated. Victory would not come without immense effort against this ingenious, defiant enemy. Weeks passed as the invasion pushed ever deeper into continental interiors. Scouts mapped towering rainforests, arid savannas teeming with migratory herbivores, and archipelagic wetlands threaded by snaking rivers. Yet wherever sensors probed, signs emerged of the natives' resistance evolving. Swarms of jellyfish like flyers with corrosive venom would kamikaze tanks, shorting circuits before exploding in noxious clouds. Worms as thick as serpents would burst from soaked soils, wrapping treads and grapplers in acid-spitting maws. Patrols went missing with alarming frequency. Scan data revealed cunning ambush sites collapsed tunnels, quagmires disguised as solid ground, trees that would suddenly animate writhing limbs to pulverize suits. Each assailant tailored perfectly to thwart human weapons and maneuverability in its domain. Gradually, Hit and fate assaults coalesced into organized counterattacks. Ten thousand blobs would converge as a tidal wave of blubber and fangs, crashing against infantry lines before dissolving back among the bracken. Enormous sauropod analogs thundered onto the plains, trampling all beneath their elephantine footfalls before wheeling back to forest strongholds. It became clear to Jacob some overarching mind was growing these threats deliberately a master biotechnician sculpting life itself into perfect guerrilla armies. He doubled aerial scans, determined to locate the puppeteer pulling the native strings. His chance came in a remote alpine range. Craggy peaks there glowed with strange emanations, as if a shroud had been drawn aside to reveal some colossal mechanism pulsing within hidden valleys. Jacob dispatched his heavy tanks' reinforcements, dozens of hulking gravity tanks, Mechs and shelled walkers packing the heaviest firepower yet seen. Over rocky scree they advanced, only to bear witness to a sight that froze synthetic blood. A canyon had vanished. In its place, a titan beyond comprehension reared amongst shattered granite spires. A miles long behemoth of throbbing flesh and grinding alloys, it seemed part biomechanism, part sentient entity evolved to perfection. Towering manipulators ended in seething plasma cores that opened fire before the humans could react. Antimatter payloads obliterated tanks and fireballs. Pulses of dark energy scattered mechs like leaves. And with a bone-shaking roar, the abomination charged, trampling the remnants underfoot. In that moment, Jacob faced the horrific truth this world had deemed humanity unfit to conquer it and marshaled evolution itself to craft the perfect defense. His forces were outmatched on an enemy's turf now being retooled against them. Victory was no longer a guarantee in this unending arms race of flesh and steel. The real war had only just begun.